Welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my kitchen cabinets and how I've organized them. We've lived in our new home for a couple of months now and really settled in. And just like with the drawer organization, which I shared last week, the cabinets really just flow for my needs in the kitchen, which I spend an awful lot of time, especially as a mom to two little ones. And I'm just very pleased with the space and how it's all panned out. We have so many cabinets in this kitchen, blessed with a lot of room. Um, but I also took a lot of time when I was moving to carefully consider what I wanted to have in this new kitchen. Because believe it or not, I know you're going to look at our cabinets and think, my goodness, she has a lot of stuff. But believe it or not, there was actually quite a bit more uh, that I had in my old kitchen. Just so much, just so much. And I whittled it down quite a bit. Um, and I'm really pleased with what we have. It feels like plenty. There's even some things I'm sure I could purge down the road, but I just saved what felt right at this moment. Um, and then we'll see as the year progresses if I feel called to, to make any adjustments there. But uh, without further ado, let's take a look. All right, kitchen overview one more time in case you haven't seen it the past 18 million times I've shown it, but this is the kitchen. I'm in love with it. Lots and lots of cabinet space. If you'd like to see how I organize the drawers in my kitchen, I will link that video for you. But I have lots of lower cabinetry, which I use primarily for cooking tools. And then the upper cabinets I use for plates, food storage, um, some cooking essentials, cups, mugs, that sort of thing. So let's go through everything and I'll show you what I've done so far. Let's start with the main cabinets that I use for cooking and cooking prep. Um, so that would be kind of centered around this area here, which is around the sink. Uh, this little corner cabinet always so fun to line the corner cabinets. I did line it right the day I moved in. Not very well, but it's tucked in there so you can't see it and I don't need it to look beautiful. I just need it to be functional. I choose to line these because they just tend to catch things, um, sometimes drips and things. So it's just good to, I think, have a liner. I might eventually line all of my cabinets to be honest, but I haven't as of yet. So this is a very narrow opening. So I had to be a little bit uh, judicious about what I chose to place in there. Basically, I put all of my Corningware dishes down here. I mainly use these two small ones. I use them almost every day. The bigger ones I don't use as much because it's just me and two little kids here, um, but it is good to have the whole set. And then I have my salad spinners, which I use the small one pretty much every day, and colanders I use every day, strainers in different sizes, and a steam basket. Right next to that and under my stove top is where I keep my big stock pots, I have two of them, and my cookie sheets and cooking sheets, um, drying racks or cooling racks I guess you would say, and then my sill pads. I'm kind of thinking if I can find a small enough standing divider, kind of like the ones that I use for my uh, cookie sheets, it'd be nice to kind of corral the sill pats a little bit more, but otherwise they just work kind of wedged up against each other. And I use those in place of foil and parchment in my cooking. I also have that mug tree, which I only use very, very rarely when I'm having a party or something, but I did want to hold on to it and it just fits really nicely back there. Um, this is just an open space because it has all of the attachments and the gas line for the stove top, uh, but it fits these things perfectly and so convenient when I need to fill up a big stock pot with water if I'm boiling pasta or something. And it's a great place to keep the cookie sheets too because they can stand up, which is how I prefer to store mine. Right next to that and kind of adjacent to the stove area is where I keep my pots and pans. I did pare this down quite a bit to just the essentials for me and my cooking right now. Um, so I have three sizes of pans and a cast iron pan and a wok and this small little guy, which I use all the time to 
heat small things um because it heats up really fast it's my favorite little pot it's by dansk and i will link it below because i get questions on that all the time and actually used some um cloth trivets that i've had for ever to just protect my pans on the ones that i've stacked i've tried to stack as little as possible since i did do such a big purge of kitchen items everything has a bit more room now and then my little pots up there, and my smaller pots, and I have those staggered a little bit with just the two that I use most frequently, the two sizes, and the ones that I use less frequently in the back. Um, and then I have some backup coffee pods for my Nespresso just tucked in there, um, kind of out of the way, because my coffee station is right here. My coffee maker and frother, milk frother are right there, essential everyday items kind of at the edge of the kitchen, so not in the way of the prep area, but perfect spot for me. Uh, and above that, in the cabinet, I keep mugs, coffee. My tea maker, I decided to keep in the cabinet, and I do make tea almost every day, but I just pull it down when I want to, because I just wanted to have less stuff on the counter, and I just have so much produce lately, <laughs> it's taking up all the room. I did pare down my mug collection quite a bit. I'm considering putting in hooks, but it requires me to raise this shelf a little bit and I cannot for the life of me get the shelf out to raise it because um, I definitely have room to raise that shelf another notch or so. Um, I don't, we don't use glasses that much. So I do keep my coffee making stuff here. Things that I use every day, liquid stevia and cinnamon is what I put in my little lattes. And then I have Nespresso pods. I prefer the Lungo um, pull and um, I just have these little glass jars, one for decaf, one for caffeinated. Um, just kind of, again, to take, the, I had them on the counter originally, but so much produce and I just wanted to ha have my counters as clear as possible. I keep all of my tea and hot chocolate and cider stuff up there because we actually do use those stuff quite a bit, especially in the cooler months. Those are bins I had from the old house and I've actually purchased a couple to, um, update the area so I thought that'd be fun to organize with you. All right here are the two bins. Tea, honey, hot chocolate, cider. I'm very certain that the hot chocolate cider is gonna fit really nicely in these other bins. Not sure about the tea so let's let's take a look. I purchased these two bins on sale from the, from the container store. They're made from 100% recycled plastic, which, I don't know, makes me feel a little bit better about buying bins. I'm trying in general to repurpose as much as possible, but sometimes you just want something specific for a space, and I buy the bin, you know? I just buy it. So, I've got Swissness for my kids. This is my favorite. It's Four Sigmatic, yum. Other hot cocoa mix I use for the kids. Yeah, see, this is gonna fit so nice. This is hot cider mix. Some more cinnamon sticks. These are things that I use to brew cider in larger portions or individual. It's a really small one. So, one bin. That one works perfect. This is the one where my tea collection is <laughs> larger than the bin. But these are the bins I want to use. They fit really nicely in the cabinet. So let's see what we can do. I did it. Empty. I did it, look. It's a little squished, but I am going to finish up these teas. This is reminding me to finish these up, and then I will not probably replace those exact. Um, I, I'll probably take those tins out, to be honest, because um, the steepology has moved to bags, and that works just fine for the amount of tea I buy. And one saying, yay, let's put these up and see how they fit. I really shouldn't. I really should label these, um, and I probably will. But look, now they fit really nicely, and 
they just kind of are aesthetically pleasing on the one hand, but they also are easier to wipe out. Like I'm done with using any sort of woven or fabric bins in my um, kitchen pantry items and stuff like that. So yay, mission accomplished. So if we move over, I believe I showed these cabinets in a previous video, um, but this is where I keep most of my cooking oils and spices. Um, cooking sprays, salt and peppers down there. I keep our bread up here. I'm always a little bit mystified about where to keep bread and it seems to be really enjoying being in the cabinet. So that's where I keep that. And then graters and uh, twine, kind of miscellaneous stuff up there. I don't use those things super often. I can reach them just fine without a ladder. This is the only corner cabinet I have. I do believe I showed this in a video, so I'm not gonna go through detail on this, but basically all of my measuring glasses and cooking oils and um, cooking vinegars, all of my spices, um, just so easy, right between the stove and the sink for easy access, and I definitely go into this cabinet many, many times a day. I did a full video on my undersink cabinet, so I will sh I will link that video, and in that I share more about this space too. I did have a partition added to separate the trash from the other part of the cabinet, which works out great, so I'm not gonna go into great detail on that, but basically that's where my cutting boards live and my kids' stuff, um, and that works out great, and we do have a pull out trash doohickey there. So these bottom three cabinets are basically bakeware. Down here, I've got all of my Dutch ovens and different casserole dishes, Pyrex dishes in different sizes. Don't use that stuff super often, but I own it and stuff that I want to have on hand. Um, I use the Pyrex dishes quite a bit. Uh, and when we have larger gatherings, I imagine I'll be using the casserole dishes. Under these cabinets here is all baking related. Um, these are mixing bowls and glass bowls that I use quite a bit. My favorite stainless steel bowls that I get at Whole Foods actually is my favorite housewarming gift to give. And our panini press, which we don't use super often, the Mickey waffle iron we use all the time. And if it's still available, I'll link it because it is the best. And then this one has my more traditional baking pans, muffin tins, loaf pans, pie dishes, all of these baking things that I like to have really accessible. And now that I'm really settling into the house, I'm kind of considering making this whole section baking central. So that's really convenient to have there. And if you watched my drawer video, I have all of these sorts of things in the drawer right here. All the tools are just nicely organized in a functional way for me. The cabinet over here I have been using for food storage items, which has been great. I actually bought a couple of things to see um, if we could corral these um, lids a little bit because I don't like how they just flop over. I found these at the container store. They're by iDesign, which is essentially the same um, as Linus, the drawer organizers that I like. That's what they used to be called and now they're called this. Um, and I thought they might work. So let's put them up and see, see how they go. So that actually worked out really, really well. Um, I really like the way that that turned out. And I was able to spread things out just a little bit more. So it looks a little bit less condensed. And now that I've been in this space and using these containers for a while, I really don't use those anymore. I'm missing so many lids anyway. I'm thinking of passing the most of those bigger um, round glass containers on um, and that would open up some space and my idea is to move those these food storage things up to what would be an empty shelf there and then make this all my most used baking stuff organized nicely um, like flour sugars baking powder and baking soda chocolate chips you know those sorts of things and um, that makes sense because it's right by the um, the mixer and all my baking stuff. I don't know. Does that sound like a good idea? If that is what I end up doing, I will definitely share my new baking center with you. Next here we have our dishes. Lots and lots and lots of white dishes. Plenty of those. My favorite soup, chili kind of mugs, bowl, mug bowls. I'm not sure what to call those. And I less use things like gravy boats and and uh, corn plates, I don't use those very often. Um, but these two shells I use quite a bit and it's just so aesthetically pleasing, I can't 
even tell you how much joy that brings me, how organized that is. And the last uh, cabinet that's in kind of the active kitchen area, I would say, is this one. Um, so these are my favorite hand-thrown pottery from Marsha's Clay Art. You probably have seen around my kitchen. I have the bowls um, with fruit and vegetables kind of here and there. Um, but these are the ones that I use for myself, basically, to eat out of every day, and I just keep them there for easy access. I have to-go hot beverage thermoses and the Nutribullet, which we use quite a bit for smoothies. And then up there I have our supplements and I just have it in that little bin because it's got a little um, handle on it. It's easy to pull out. Uh, I just try to keep any, and that also has like Tylenol and kids Tylenol and stuff and I just try to keep that, that kind of stuff high up. I'm not gonna go through all the other cabinets today. They're not necessarily active kitchen cabinets, I would say, and I haven't quite figured out the space yet, except for the kids' art stuff, which I'll probably do a video on at some point. I will show you this because this is spillover food storage. Um, all of my glass jars, which I use for various things, and then this is the plastic, like reusable, but also disposable stuff that I use for parties and to give food to family members and people who come to visit. So I just like to have a place for that. And I have the room, so I was like, well, why not? And I realized I have quite a bit, a few jars there. <laughs> but, um, you know, sometimes you need a lot of jars. I just happen to have the space for them, so I spread them out. These cabinets are very uh, shallow, though, so they don't have a ton of depth to them, but it's perfect for this sort of thing. I did give you guys a peek at these four cabinets last week. I just thought I'd show you the last few spaces on the other side of the kitchen. So this is stuff that I don't access all the time or just needs more room. This is actually a really deep cabinet over the stove and microwave area um, that I could layer in more appliances behind, but these are the appli large appliances that I have that I decided to keep out of all the ones that I got rid of so many things, you guys. Um, but I have the Cuisinart, and I actually really just like that one because it's enormous and ridiculous, but I own it, so it seems silly to buy a new one when that one works just fine. Vitamix I love, and the Instant Pot I love. And then I reserved this spot over the um, refrigerator, and I'm just gonna have a lift you up here to see, for party stuff serverware. Um, all of my little dishes and special things that I use when I'm entertaining, I pared my collection of this stuff down significantly. A lot. And I just kept the bare essentials that I really love. Maybe they're not the bare essentials in terms of actual essentials, but for in terms of party um, hosting, they're the bare essentials to me. And uh, I just use a couple of organizational things I have on hand, that little riser I had and the little basket to put toothpicks and things like that in. Works just fine. I stack things up because, again, I don't access this stuff very often, so to me it's okay if it's stacked up. I don't worry about, you know, having to reach under things all the time, but that's a really good use of that space. Again, a very nice deep cabinet and perfect kind of out of the way, but accessible when necessary. I hope you enjoyed nosing around my cabinet tree with me. I, like I said, I'm blessed with so much storage space in this kitchen. And I think that can be a trap for holding on to a lot of things and cramming a lot of things because you have the space. Um, but I feel really good about the amount of stuff I have in here right now. I know some people are going to think it's way too much. Some people are going to think the opposite. I don't know about that, but but it works for me and my family and our needs right now. Um, and who knows as you know as time passes, what how those needs will shift. But I have noticed as I've gotten older that I have wanted less and less. I've wanted fewer nicer things, if that makes sense. Um, and I have a lot of nice things, and. They fit beautifully in this space and I enjoy this space. It feels, has a really good flow to it and I really think we've settled in so beautifully. So next week we are tackling the pantry for real. Thank you for all of your, your input. I'm considering everything and I'm excited to finish that up because then the kitchen will feel really complete to me uh, and then we'll move on to a different space in the house. But 
I hope you're enjoying this look around the kitchen with me and organizing and I'd love to know if you um, have been inspired to kind of look at your flow in your kitchen, your organizational flow at all, um, and what that um, has resulted in for you. Because I've, I've heard from some of you already that you've been changing things up and really enjoying that process. And I think fall is a great time um, for organizing, just like spring is kind of that. Let's, let's refresh time of year. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week. And until then, take very good care. Bye.